Hello, hi, and welcome. If you're new here, my name is Sarah, and this is Wicked Reading. So today, I have a lot of books to open and show you guys. So I'm actually filming this on my birthday, and I thought as a little birthday gift to myself, I would finally go through all the books that I have accumulated since my last haul. So these books have all been bought by me over the course of like the past three or four months or so. I also have quite a few packages. I have some more over here um, of books that I, again, bought myself, but I don't remember what they are because they've been sitting in their packages for so long that I don't remember. So I don't know how many books we have here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 28, 29. 30. 37 that I can tell, but I don't know how many are in the packages. There might be one or two books in each package. So it's between 40 and 50 books. And I actually probably have a few more than that because since it is my birthday, I have some gifts waiting for me from my husband that I am not opening yet. I'm waiting until he gets home from work. I took the day off of work for myself so I could have a me day. And uh, so I have to wait for him to get home from work to open those gifts. And I can probably guarantee you that there's a few books in there. So I might insert a clip at the end of me later on today showing you guys what books those are just so I don't have to hold on to them until my next haul and I could just immediately put them on the bookshelves. So if you're new here, I read mostly horror and fantasy. I dabble in a lot of other genres, but I tend to stick very close to horror and fantasy. That being said, most of these books here are going to be horror and fantasy. I know I have at least one Greek mythology retelling. I know I also have a lit fic like love story somewhere in here as well. There might be a few other ones. I don't really remember to be totally honest. So I am not going to be able to separate it into genres because again, I don't know what's in the packages. So I'm sorry, it's gonna be a little bit chaotic. I, I, I'm not gonna be able to really do chapters or timestamps for genres. I don't have anything separated out. So we're just gonna grab and go. I guess I'll at least do kind of like the free, floating books first and then we'll kind of open the packages and stuff because that'll make quite a mess. First off, I want to show you before I forget because I'm currently reading this and I did pick up a copy of Edenville by Sam Rebel or Rebeline. I don't know how to say his name. Rebeline, I think. Um, I don't know what this is about. I'm about 25 pages in and I still don't know what it's about. I got it because it is for Amy Noel Reads' book club called the Dark Hearts Book Club. So I did pick up a copy of this. This is a horror. That's really all I know. Um, and there's like writing and authors involved, but that's all I got so far. I'll show you guys what's in this bag first because this is actually, if you look at the bag, it's from my trip to Italy. So um, if you're new here, you wouldn't know, but me and my husband recently got married in July and we actually did an adventure elopement in Italy and like did our honeymoon and stuff. So we didn't have like a normal wedding. We just kind of did that with a photographer and then just stayed for a couple more weeks for the honeymoon. So I got a few books while I was in Italy because of course I did. So first I got If Cats Disappeared from the World by Genki Kawamura. Now I honestly don't remember what this is about. I think it's kind of like more lit fic and I think it's a little bit sad. I don't know, I don't remember. <laughs> I picked this up because Ashley from A Frolic Through Fiction read it and really enjoyed it and recommended it. So. Um, I picked it up. Then I also picked up a copy of Circe by Madeline Miller because I really like the like UK overseas cover a lot. So I decided to pick up a copy there. And then this was probably my favorite one that I picked up. It is just a collection of poems by Emily Dickinson. But first of all, the cover is stunning. The cut of the book is beautiful. But what I love the most is that every poem is in both English and Italian. And I, I loved that, like how perfect. So it's totally a piece of my Italy trip, but I can still read it. I did also, actually let me grab. I did also get this book, which I totally forgot about because it's um, being put on display. But I got a book about Dracula or like vampires. You can barely see it. Um, but this is totally in Italian, so like I can't read it. But it's got all these like cool pictures and stuff throughout, and I just thought that it was cool. So I got it as kind of like a souvenir piece. 
but there's so much illustration in it and yeah i just i really liked it so i got it so this book just sits on my coffee table as a little like display piece so this little stack right here i did show in my previous vlog as like a mini haul so i'll run through these super fast um, I got Lost Souls by Poppy Z. Bright. This is like vampires and rock and roll horror. Um, that's all I got on that one. Then I picked up a copy of Nightmares and Dreamscapes by Stephen King because I really like the vintage kind of covers and the mass market paperback for like the older style horror books. So I pretty much got it from my collection. I have since learned that it's a series of short stories or like novellas. I don't know how short we're talking, but I recently learned that because I literally had no idea what it was. I just liked the cover. I picked up a copy of A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon. That is a very long title by Sarah Hawley. As you can kind of surmise and what I'm guessing is that this is about a witch fake dating a demon. That's all I know. I wanted to get a witchy rom-com, so I did. Then I picked up a copy of Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. I don't know if this is like a retelling story narrative or if it's kind of more of a nonfiction. And we learn more about the lore and the history of the lore when it comes to like Thor, Odin, and Loki, and all of those gods. Then I got The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix. This is another horror, but Grady Hendrix is very much kind of like comedy horror. So I've heard very mixed things about this one, but I think that the premise sounds so good. So I'm still gonna read it. I hope I like it. I've heard very mixed things though, but we shall see. This book, I, I don't really know what it's about. Like it's fantasy, but I haven't really heard anybody talk about it. Red Sister by Mark Lawrence. All I know about this book is like our main female character is raised by like either warriors or raised to fight in some way. So she's trained from a very young age and she either becomes like an assassin or something like that. It sounds very much to me like at least the beginning of Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas, but it's much more adult and I think it's a little bit more like dark and brutal, but I don't actually no. I haven't even finished Throne of Glass series so it's m really kind of reminds me more of the beginning at least. I'm sure this story takes off in a very different direction but it kind of gives me those vibes but in a very different light. Then I got Inkblood Sister Scribe by Emma Tors. Um, this is another fantasy and I also can't remember what this is about. Something with like sisters and books and like the I think the books hold magic or something like that and like they have to find a book or something like that I don't know let me see hold on yes so it says the family has guarded a collection of ancient and rare books books that let a person walk through walls or manipulate the elements books of magic that half sisters Joanna and Esther have been raised to revere and protect um, blah, blah, blah. in the process they'll uncover a world of magic far bigger and more dangerous than they ever imagined and all the secrets their parents kept hidden secrets that span centuries continents and even other libraries so it's very fantasy with like books and sisters <laughs> Which I think sounds really good. So I'm excited to eventually read this. So this, I think, is the only book that kind of comes close to like a romance. I don't think it's like a romance, but it's kind of like a love story. It's like more literary fiction. And that is Alone With You in the Ether by Olivia Blake. So I think it's going to be more um, heartbreaking and emotional than like just a fluffy romance. But... I'm excited. I've heard really great things about this. I really like the cover. I think the blue is really pretty. And yeah, um, I have yet to read an Olivia Blake book. I have another one. I don't remember what it is, but I have another one by her and I, I'm seemingly collecting a lot of books by her and have yet to actually read a book by her. So um, I'm, I'm gonna need to make it happen soon, but I have this. Next, I have a little horror novella called Night of the Mannequins by Stephen Graham Jones. I enjoy Stephen Graham Jones. I haven't read too much by him yet. I've actually, I've only read um, The Only Good Indians by him so far, but I really enjoyed that. And I do have My Heart is a Chainsaw and I wanna get to that very soon. And um, this one sounds really cool to me. I like the premise. 
And so yeah, I got a little horror novella. Next is another fantasy and I got God Killer by Hannah Kaner. Um, this cover is like stunning. I kind of wish I would have been able to get any of the special editions, but even just like the original cover is absolutely stunning to me. And the story just sounds really interesting to me as well. From what I've heard, it just sounds like a kind of war between gods and like people that are known as god killers. And that's, that's all I got. That's all I need to go into the book. Um, I should have probably said in the beginning of this video that I buy books based on very little information. There's a few kind of big words that stand out to me that makes me feel like I'm going to enjoy it. And I sometimes will read the synopsis and then be like, yeah, I think I will really like that and then buy it. Sometimes I don't and I just go in with my few little words that I know about it. So this is not the video to get good synopses of these books because I personally don't even know them. I'm only good at giving a synopsis after I've read a book and even sometimes that's shaky. So if I haven't read the book, I, I almost have no idea. I just know at one point in time, it sounded good for one reason or another, so I got it. All right, we'll do this little stack here. This has some of my most recent pickups. In the spirit of Halloween, I got this little stack. So I got a few goosebumps. Um, these I got all from like a used bookstore. I got The Haunted Mask which was my absolute favorite episode when I was younger. It scared the bananas out of me. I got One Day at Horror Land, Night of the Living Dummy, and Night of the Living Dummy 2. Now, I only got a few because um, they were kind of expensive. They were like all about 10 bucks, which like, I mean, when they retailed, they retailed for $4. Um, I get it. They're like kind of sought out, but I know that I could find these if I tried to for like cheaper because they are cheap books. They're middle grade books. So, um, I probably definitely overpaying for these, but, um, it was a one-stop pickup. So whatever. Then I also got, uh, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. I got an old copy of that because I absolutely loved this when I was little. So I just, for nostalgic purposes, I wanted to have it again. I was flipping through it and I'm so, I don't know if I ever actually read the stories. I think I only looked at the pictures when I had this book because technically it wasn't even my book. It was my older brother's book, but I would always pull it from his shelf. And I think I just like looked at the pictures because I was flipping through. And I was like, these are like insanely short stories. We're talking like one or two pages uh, of a story. This is all just one story. So <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, that's, I don't remember the stories being that short, but I don't think I actually read them now that I think about it, but I will now. Then I got another Grady Hendrix book, The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. I hear a lot more positive things about this Grady Hendrix book. Um, I don't know, vampires in like a book club. That's all I know. That's, that's good enough for me. Oh, I forgot I picked up this one. So I do have another kind of like romance. It's kind of like a dark, uh, gray area romance and that is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This has to do with a relationship between a teacher and like a student so I, it's not like a good romance. It's not a feel-good one. It's definitely a you know check your trigger warnings kind of romance relationship book. I wanted to get a couple more books that I felt would be like tear jerkers for me because sometimes the mood hits and I just want to cry and read or watch something sad. So um, yeah, I don't know. I got it. Then I picked up The Shuddering by Anna Anya, Anya Alburn. Um, I'm excited to read this. I picked it up because it's like an isolated winter monster book. So this will definitely be on my winter TBR. I needed more winter horror. So when I saw this at the bookstore, I got it. I've heard really great things about this writer in general. She has written a ton of stuff and I did not realize how much stuff I knew of hers that I didn't know was hers, but I haven't read any of it but I've heard about a lot of the books that she's 
written. I do have Brother and Seed on my Kindle from KU, so I do plan on reading those at some point in time as well, which are also by her. So I'm excited to check out this author. Maybe I'll do like a author taste test kind of video and read a book specifically by this author for that vlog. We'll see. I've been thinking about doing like an author taste test vlog for a little while now, so let me know if you guys would be interested in seeing that. Or I could even maybe do it with Olivia Blake since I have a few books now from her that I haven't read any of her books yet. So we'll see. Let me know what you guys think. And then these two books I have already read and talked about on my channel, but I had originally read them as library checkouts, but I loved them so much that I wanted to have copies for my shelf, so I bought them. So I got Mary by Nat Cassidy. And then I also picked up Curse of the Reaper by Brian McCauley. I did pick this copy up from Pingo Books, so it was a secondhand purchase. Here's the last little stack of my free floating books. So right on the top, I have a old vintage mass market paperback copy of Misery by Stephen King. I really want to read this. I hear amazing things about Misery. I feel like anytime Stephen King is brought up, the top books tend to be like Misery, Pet Cemetery, or sometimes I'll hear one of his newer works, but Misery is like a very, very highly liked work by Stephen King. And I hear from a lot of people that the book and the movie are just as like phenomenal. So I might do like a read this and then watch it kind of thing. Cause I haven't seen the movie either. I know what it's about just cause like I do because it's a Stephen King thing. Um, so I know what it's about, but I'm excited to like read it and officially watch the movie too. All of these books were featured on a uh, go book shopping with me vlog. So I'll have that linked. Um, so I'm just gonna run through them super quick. But I did pick up a copy of Bird Box by Josh Mallerman, For the Wolf by Hannah Witten, Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid, Gun Love by Jennifer Clement, and I Do Not Forgive You by Amber Sparks, and then The Martian by Andy Weir. All right, so let's get to opening some of these packages. I'm gonna do like the envelopes first and then we'll go through the boxes. Ow. Okay, hold on. I opened this, but let me open another one to show with it. I don't know which one it would be. I'll try this one. Yep, I guessed right. So these books go together, so I figured I would open them both first and show y'all. So we have The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent, and then the sequel uh the ashes and the star cursed king oh my god this is thick um so i got both of these these are part of the uh crowns of oh i don't know what that's <laughs> i don't know how to pronounce that uh nyoxia the crowns of nyoxia novels so this is like a fantasy romance with vampires and that's all i know um, I mean, I'm sure you guys have all seen these books because they like just swept fantasy romance readers by storm. I am still in the middle of reading the War of Lost Hearts trilogy by Chris Broadbent. So I want to finish that before I start these. So as soon as I do that, I will eventually get into these ones. But I have heard nothing but fantastic things. I hope it lives up to the hype. I haven't read fantasy for a little bit now. I've done a lot of horror the past couple months. And winter, I am going to dive into fantasy. And I'm really excited to explore that genre again. Because it's just, it's been a little bit too long. And I'm craving some fantasy romance stuff. These are printed a little different than each other. Um, which I know that her books got picked up by a publisher. So I'm wondering if that's why the sequel is like a soft, um, is like a soft, whatever, velvety finished thing. And this, the, my copy of the first one is not like that. And also the paper is a little bit different, but that's okay. They're at least the same size. So as long as that's okay, I don't mind. If they were different sizes, that would annoy me a little bit more. But yeah, so we have these. Hmm. I forgot I got this book. Isn't this a sequel? Did I get the first one? I'm pretty sure this is a sequel. Is it not? 
So I got Queen of Myth and Monsters by Adrienne um, Isold. Um, but I'm pretty sure I thought, I, I'm confused. I, I know, okay. <laughs> that, that you, um, you had, you, you, you could. It's a fantasy romance. I remember now I bought this because it was like dirt cheap on one of like Amazon's sales. I think I literally paid like $2 or something for it. So this is a sequel. I don't know if I bought the first one. I guess we'll see once we go through all the packages. The first one is King of Battle and Blood, and this is like a fantasy romance with vampires again. Oh, this is a thick book. Okay, it's not like that thick, but I thought it was like really skinny. So this is Negative Space by B.R. Yeager? Yeager? I don't know. Um, and I don't remember what this is about, but the cover is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that cover. Oh my goodness. Let's see what this is. I saw this recommended on a Reddit post. I know that. Do I remember what the post is about? No, I don't. Um, I don't know why I got this. Let's see. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Oh, geez. Okay. This is like an intense book. So it's like a horror. First of all, let me just say that. It says, like smoke off a collision between Dennis Cooper's George Miles cycle and Beyond the Black Rainbow, two books that I have no idea what those are, absorbing the energy of mind control, reincarnation, parallel universes, altered states, school sh obsession, radiation, and so much else, B.R. Yeager's multivalent voicing of drugged up occult youth reveals fresh tunnels into the gray space between the body and the spirit, the living and the dead, providing a well-aimed shot in the arm for the world of conceptu conceptual contemporary horror. Oh my God, this sounds intense. I need to know what the Reddit post was asking recommendations for and why I thought that this would be it. Uh, I think maybe it was asking for occult books and it seems like this might um, hit that, but wow, it seems like it hits a lot more than that. Um, huh, I'm questioning my choices a little bit, but, um, I'll probably still give it a shot. <laughs> if you've read it, let me know. This just seems like a much darker horror than I tend to do. It definitely will have quite a bit of trigger warnings just in that blurb alone from what I can tell. I don't know how I feel about it, to be honest. There you go. Oh, okay. All right. Here we go. King of Battle and Blood. So I did get the first one. If you've read it, let me know what you think of it because now I have quite a few vampire fantasy romance to pick from. So let me know which one I should prioritize. Ugh. I don't like opening these ones. Oh, I forgot I got this. So I ended up getting a copy of... Ghost Eaters by Clay uh, McLeod Chapman, I believe is how you say his name. So this is like a horror, but it's I think a little bit more of like a literary horror maybe where it really tackles kind of like grief. So it's kind of like a grief horror from what I've heard. I actually got a gift card to Barnes & Noble for my work. So this was one of the books I decided to pick up with that gift card because I think it was like half off as well. They were doing like half off hard covers. So this is one that I got. So that was all of like the envelope packages. So now we just have these boxes. So I'm gonna do these two boxes and then I'll do my Illumicrate, which is like a special edition. And then I'll do my fairy loot at the end. These are two months of the book only adult and young adult subscription so i don't know which months these are but we'll find out when we open them so anyways moving on <laughs> oh okay so this was a pre-order that i forgot about pre-order from barnes and noble and that is fox club by adeline grace i read belladonna i really enjoyed it i think i gave it four stars i thought it was really cute and sweet and i like the premise of it um it is YA but um I enjoyed it enough I wish I wouldn't have pre-ordered this honestly because I want to get my hands on the UK cover I just think the UK cover is just like mm, stunning beautiful perfect this cover is okay this cover is okay but um 
Not my favorite, not my favorite by any means. I don't really prefer faces on my covers. I, I like other imagery much more than faces. It's okay once in a while, sometimes it's done well, but um, I, I just, I really like the UK cover a lot more. So I wish I would have kind of like not pre-ordered this, but it's okay, I need to read it anyways. The only difference with the pre-order is that the Naked book is like this raspberry kind of pink color. I don't know what color the original one is, but I think that that's the only, the only difference. And then I got a copy of Earthlings by Sayaka Murata. I hope that's how you say her name. I don't know what this book is about at all, but I see it recommended a lot for people that like very bizarre, weird stories, people who liked Bunny by Mona Wad, I see those two listed together quite a bit. So I wanted to get this because yes, I like bizarre, weird stories. So I decided to get a copy of this. Um, I wish that was in there, but whatever. I can't stand fake stickers, but it's okay. I got this from Barnes and Noble with my gift card, so can't complain that much. All right, so now at my Illuma crate. This was like a pre-order for a special edition. I don't buy special editions very often. I feel weird buying special editions of books that I haven't read yet, so I don't even know if I like them. This is, in fact, a special edition of a book that I haven't read yet, <laughs> and I, I've actually never even read from this author, but I just, I've heard such great things about her series, and I'm pretty sure this is her adult novel like fantasy debut so I was like you know what it's beautiful so I'm just gonna do it and that is sword catcher by Cassandra Clare this is really beautiful um I really so the sprayed edges we have pur solid purple on the top and bottom and then we have like a almost like a stained glass effect on the side stunning I love that. It reminds me of Shrek. And then let's see the naked cover. Very pretty as well. It just has that gold kind of filigree detail, which I love. I think that that's beautiful. We have some character art at the end pages. Very pretty. So this is beautiful. Do I know what it's about? No, I don't remember. I know I read the synopsis before I bought this. Oh, here's the map. I know I read the synopsis before I bought this and it sounded like at least something that I would like. So like I didn't just buy it blindly. I haven't heard anybody talk about it yet, but um, like I said, I hear amazing things about Cassandra Clare's work in general. And I have wanted to start like her young adult series, but it is so long and I, I'm intimidated. I'm intimidated by it, but I can handle at least one beefy book. I don't know if this is going to be a series. I, I wouldn't doubt it considering the books that she's already written. So I wouldn't doubt that this is a series, but getting in on the ground floor is much more approachable to me than trying to start a series that's like 15 books deep already. So I have this and I'm excited. It's really pretty. I guess when I say though, like I don't usually buy special editions, I guess that's kind of wrong because I do obviously have the fairy loot subscription so I get the fairy loot subscription special editions I I just don't tend to uh, go outside of that and seek out other special editions for books unless it's a book I've already read and I know I love um, but that being said let's get into the fairy loots all right here's our two books I don't know which is which let's try this one out so this is the August box this one is the young adults book and the theme is Reap What You Sow. Here's like the artwork thing for that. Here's the artwork for the book. And then the uh, author letter if you want to read that. So let's see what the book is. I guarantee you I haven't heard of any of, of the books in the fairy loot boxes. So I will have no idea what they're about. Just as a pre-warning. Oh, it's upside down in here. Bonesmith. This looks pretty cool. Kind of. The like character is like shiny, so it almost looks um I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's cool though. I like the colors. I don't have many like green books. The ed the sprayed edges are pretty though, but it's just like her face again. It's very green. I do really like this. Oh, the cover is reversible. I do really like the character art. 
which is featured again on the end pages, and I do think that that is stunning. Another character, the Naked book is this like pine green kind of thing with this, with the white graphic. Pretty simple. The cover is reversible, so that's pretty cool. Here's the other side of it. Okay, so I'm gonna read what this is about because I have no idea. So it says, in the Dominions, the dead linger, violent and unpredictable, unless a bone smith severs the ghost from its earthly remains. For bone smith Wren, becoming a Valkyrie, a ghost fighting warrior, is a chance to solidify her place in the noble house of bone and impress her frequently absent father. But when sabotage causes Wren to fail her qualifying trial, she is banished to the border wall, the last line of defense against a wasteland called the Breach, where the vicious dead roam unchecked. Determined to reclaim her father's respect, Wren gets her chance when a house of gold prince is kidnapped and taken beyond the wall. To prove she has what it takes to be a Valkyrie, Wren vows to cross the Breach and rescue the prince. But to do so, she's forced into an uneasy alliance with one of the kidnappers, a fierce ironsmith called Julian from the exiled House of Iron, the very people who caused the breach in the first place, and the House of Bones' sworn enemy. So enemies to lovers, I'm assuming. As they travel, Ren and Julian spend as much time fighting each other as they do the undead. But when they discover there's more behind the kidnapping than either of them knew, they'll need to work together to combat the real danger a dark alliance that is brewing between the living and the undead. It says Gideon the Ninth meets Game of Thrones White Walkers in this dark young adult fantasy about a disgraced ghost fighter warrior who must journey into a haunted wasteland to rescue a kidnapped prince. That actually sounds really good to me. That sounds so good. <laughs> so I hope that it is. I really, really need to actually read some of the books that I've received from Fairy Loot. I think I've yet to read any of them. I know. I know. So I'm going to prioritize that. And this sounds fantastic. So this might be one of the books that I read very soon in order to get some of those books under my belt. So then we have the adult book left for August. Here is some character art with the author's note. The theme for this was powerful bloodlines. <laughs> Ooh, I see blue and purple. Forged by Blood. This is pretty. I really like the stenciled edges too. It is just the character again, but I think it's really pretty. In like blue and purple. Ooh, the Naked Book is gorgeous. I like the Naked Book way better than the cover, to be honest. It's like, uh, almost like tie-dye-ish, but like not swirly tie-dye, you know? And it has like that gold filigree stuff. The character art end pages. Oh, the cover's reversible too. Ooh, I really like the reverse side. That's really pretty. Okay, so let's see what this is about. Demi only wanted to, to survive, to avoid the suspicion of tyrannical Asia's occupying her homeland to escape the king's brutal genocide of her people, the Aluso, and to live peacefully with her secretive mother while learning to control the blood magic that is her birthright. But survival has given way to revenge. A betrayal has cost her mother's life, and Demi demands payment. She bides her time until the devious Lord Ekwenzi grants her the perfect opportunity, kidnap the Aji prince, and bargain to save the remaining Aluso. She sets out on her hunt with her childhood friend Colin in tow, but the way ahead proves far more dangerous than either of them could have imagined. For she and the prince share more than deadly secrets, and every moment will tangle them further into the forbidden, unmistakable attraction. Mm, so maybe like faded lovers. If she is to claim justice for her mother and her people, Demi will not be able to trust anyone or anything. Not Colin, not her fledging magic, not even her own heart. It says, a tale of rebellion and redemption, loves and lies, forged by blood is epic fantasy at its finest, richly steeped in Nigerian mythology. Very cool. It says on the back, they took her language, her mother, and her home. They hunt her people for the blood magic that sings through them. Now Demi has their prince and no intention of letting him go. There will be blood. 
So, sounds very intense. So those are both the August books for Fairy Loot. So moving on to this one. So I guess this is September. This one is the adult book. The theme was Beneath the Mask. Here's some character art with the uh, author's letter. And let's see. I like, I see some pink edges. So I like that. Ooh, this is gorgeous. Son of Blood and Ruin. I really like, oh, I really like this cover. This is stunning. I like it a lot. Ooh, oh my God, look at the, the sprayed edges. I almost missed that. And then they were pink, that's what I saw. Naked cover is green with some gold. We have another reversible cover, which I like the, um, the one it's at now, but this is really pretty character art. Illustrated end pages. Very pretty. Okay, so let me read what this is about really quick, and I can already tell I'm going to mispronounce most of these words, so sorry about that. Anyways, it says, The Empire of Moctezuma II has long fallen, a city raised on the bones of the Tenochtitlan. Tenochtitlan. None dare whisper the names of their gods or speak of the magic that once graced the land of the witches who hunted as jaguars, the warriors who soared as eagles. Until a new name emerges, a curse on the lips of the Spanish, a hero in the hearts of the people, a masked vigilante, a sorceress with a blade, Pantera. But that is not her only name. To all who know her, Lenora de las Casas Lazohinson is a glittering jewel of court, promised to the heir of the Spanish throne. The respectable Lady Leonora faints at the sight of blood and would sooner be caught dead than wield a sword, even against the dauntless thief with a cutting smile. No one suspects that Leonora and Pantera are one and the same. Leonora has fooled them all and with the magic of her ancestors, Running through her veins, she is nearly invincible until an ancient prophecy of destruction threatens and she is forced to decide to surrender the mask or her life. Okay, so I don't think that this is a romance. There might be a romance subplot in there, but it sounds very much based on her and like a almost like coming of age growth kind of thing, even though it is an adult book. But there we have that. And then lastly... This will be the young adult book. The theme was Invisible Truths. Here is the character art. Author's note. Ooh, I see a really pretty color palette already. Ooh, this is stunning. If I have to, if I have to be haunted by Miranda Sun, this is beautiful. I love that so much. The sprayed edges are also beautiful on the side and then there's solid black on the top and bottom. Ooh, this is stunning. Ooh, uh, the naked cover has some character art. I like that. Very pretty. We have some art on the end pages. It just kind of mirrors the cover, which I really like. The back is the same. The cover is reversible, but I really like the cover that it is now. I don't know if that's what the original cover looked like or not, but the reversible cover is really pretty too, actually. But I'm going to keep it what it is just because it's easier than trying to refold a dust jacket. I'm not doing that. Oh, and actually the author letter is in the book too, which is really cool. I like that they did that. So let's see what this is about. I'm excited. I'm judging it by the cover and I really like the cover. So let's see. Kara's just trying to stay on top of all her classes, excel at her extracurriculars and prepare for college, which means not speaking to the dead, an ability she inherited from her grandmother. Ghosts are trouble and Kara doesn't need to add their problems to her own, but then she stumbles upon the body of Zach a super popular but new, very newly dead high school golden boy in the woods, and guess what? He wants her to resurrect him. Cue trouble. It says Miranda Sun's debut touches on the power and conflicts of mother-daughter love, first romance, and finding your place in the world while honoring your culture. 
full of heart, humor, and thrills. If I have to be haunted, we'll put a spell on you. This sounds so good. I love mother-daughter stuff, and this sounds really good. I'm excited. I'm really excited, actually. I feel like I haven't gotten a book from Fairy Loot for a little bit now that I wasn't like, that like, they all sound good, but I haven't been like super, super like excited about any of them. This sounds really good. It is YA, so we'll see, but I'm excited. This one and Bonesmith both sound really good to me. And it's funny because those are both the YA books, but if you can sense a theme, I kind of like ghosts and dead and stuff like that. So these sound really good to me. So that was all the fairy loot and that was all of the books. Um, actually just kidding, I'm back. It's the next day and um, I forgot to show you guys the rest of the books that I ended up getting. So my husband did end up gifting me some more books for my birthday. So real quick, I ended up also getting The Cotton Candy Massacre Part Toots by Christopher Robertson. So this is a sequel to The Cotton Candy Massacre, which I read very recently. I have a reading vlog on it if you're interested in that. And I really, really liked it. It was a fun time. Um, and this is a sequel to that, which is way shorter. And I heard it's much gorier. It's like a carnival slasher with killer clowns. So yeah, I'm excited to read this. There is also a prequel, which I may or may not eventually read, but for now I'm definitely going to read the sequel. I'll probably wait until honestly next October to read the sequel. It's just a really fun October read or like end of summer kind of read because it is like set in a carnival. But now I have this. Then I got Touch the Night by Max Booth the Third. I don't really remember what this is about, but it does say Stranger Things and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre unite to form a blood-soaked matrimony of violence and corruption. And I think that sounds pretty good, so I'm excited. It definitely gives me Stranger Things vibes just from like the cover alone. So I don't know if this will be kind of like a monster horror. I wouldn't be surprised since they mentioned Stranger Things. Um, so there might be a little bit of sci-fi stuff going on. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I'm excited. Then I got a copy of Bright Young Women by Jessica Knoll. This cover is, first of all, beautiful. So from what I've heard, I think it's more in the thriller genre, but I'm not too sure. But I'm pretty sure it's kind of more so a thriller, which I don't typically love thrillers. But this one really piqued my interest. This book is heavily inspired by like the Ted Bundy cases. But instead of, you know, glorifying and focusing on the perpetrator, this book focuses on the survivors. I don't know if the main character is a survivor herself or it might be like her roommates or something were the ones involved in the case or something like that. So it's very kind of serial killer, but we're actually in the perspective of a survivor and on her side of the story. So that really, really interests me and I'm very excited to read this. And then lastly, we have Eyes, Guts, Throat, and Bones by Maura Fowley. Now I cannot tell you what this is about. This is strictly a cover pick. I'm planning on doing a video of reading books where I either have no idea what they're about or very little idea about what they're about. You get what I'm saying. So this book will be featured in that because I think this is like maybe the most beautiful cover I've ever seen. I think it's stunning, beautiful. I love it so much. Um, it will probably be read relatively soon. I'm thinking like winter. So those are all the books that my lovely husband got me for my birthday, but I'm not done yet because as soon as I stopped filming yesterday, guess what came? October's Fairy Loot. So we're going to open this. So this is the young adult and adult book only subscription for October. So if you don't want to know what it is yet, um, this is like the last thing I'm going to open. So you can just like skip to the outro. Let me at least say bye to you before you leave. Thanks for joining. But if you're sticking around, let's get into it. This is probably the earliest I have opened a box after receiving it since probably the first box I ever received. I tend to like put them to the side and they tend to like sit for a while. And then I end up opening like two or three boxes at once, kind of like we're doing right now. I see lots of purple. Okay, so this is the adult book. The theme was My Dear Nemesis. Here we have some character art and the author letter if you want to read that. 
So I did accidentally read what the book was, <laughs> so I know. And I've heard of it, but I don't really know what it's about. So it is The Hurricane Wars by Thea Guanzan. Um, it is really pretty. I do like this better than the original cover. This is like the one time I actually know what the original cover looked like before seeing this one. I actually like this better, so that's cool. Um, we have the stenciled edges, sprayed edges that look really pretty. There's solid purple on the top and bottom. Ooh, the Naked book is beautiful. I really like this Naked book. So it's like purple. It's got some, I don't know, flames or swirls or whatever that is with the gold foiling around it. I really like the Naked book. That looks beautiful. I would almost like just display the Naked book. And then end page artwork. Um, and then it's not like a reversible cover. Despite having heard of this book at least prior to receiving it, I don't really know what it's about still, so let's read. Taliesin was left on the steps of a Sardovian orphanage as a baby. All she has ever known is the hurricane wars, as her people fight for freedom from the tyranny of the Knight Emperor Gahiris. But are they truly her people? Taliesin dreams of one day finding where she comes from, her family and the source of the magic that flows through her veins like sunlight. A lyric of house, oh my goodness, these fantasy words I can't do. A lyric of house Asinast, master of the shadow forged legion and Gahiris' only son and heir has been honed into a weapon by his father. Tasked with obliterating the neighboring Sardovian all-fold, Alaric focuses on only one goal, extinguish all threats to the Night Empire with his armies and his storm ships and his shadow magic. That is, until he sees Taliesin burning brightly on the battlefield with the same light magic that slew his grandfather, turned his father into a monster, and ignited the decade-long hurricane wars. He tries and fails to kill her, something about her making him pause, allowing his now greatest enemy to slip through his fingers. But a new horror emerges from across the Eversea, one that promises to cause even more devastation than the hurricane wars. Only Taliesin and Illyric can stop it. Will these mortal foes be able to come together, or will they end up destroying each other and dooming their world in the process? Okay, so like a war going on. Uh, enemies to lovers, probably maybe a little bit of fate in there as well. I will look out for reviews and see what people end up thinking about it. And maybe then I'll be more motivated to pick it up. Um, it sounds pretty standard as it is right now, but yeah, it could be really good. So then this would be the YA book. The theme was Enchanted Forest. Here's our character art author letter. By the way, if you see the kitten running around, I'm sorry. I can't, she's got the zoomies. I can't stop her. Okay, so here is the book. The Forest Grim. Ooh, I like this cover by Catherine Purdy. It says, once upon a dark time. It looks like it might be a little Red Riding Hood retelling. It's really pretty. I like the sprayed edges a lot. They're solid black on the top and bottom. Very pretty. The naked cover is really pretty too. I feel like they're really killing it with the naked covers. It is like a plum purple with silver foiling. Cute little mushroom on the back. We have character art on the end pages. And a reversible cover. Ooh, which is actually really pretty. Very like a dark red plummy color tone, color palette. I'm just gonna keep it as it is because again, I can't be bothered to try to refold a dust jacket. So I'm guessing that this is like a little Red Riding Hood retelling. So let's see if that theory is correct. It says, once upon a time, Villagers would whisper their desires to the Book of Fortunes, and its pages would reveal how to obtain them. All was well until someone used the book for evil. Afterward, the branches of the forest grim snatched the book away, and the village withered. The villagers tried to make amends with the forest, but every time someone crossed its border, they never returned. 
Despite the warning from her fortune teller grandmother, Clara embarks on a journey into the deadly forest to procure the Book of Fortunes to reverse the curse and save her mother and village. Clara's friend Axel puts aside his longing for her to join the journey. The young travelers have set their minds to defying fate and daring to accomplish what no one else has been able to before. Alas, the forest, alive with dark, deadly twists on some of our most well-known fairy tales, has a mind of its own. Yeah, so it sounds like it's going to be like a dark fairy tale retelling. It looks like Little Red Riding Hood, but it might combine like a few fairy tales. The pages are stiff, um, which makes me nervous to read this copy because it'll mess with the sprayed edges. But uh, I'm interested and I do get in the mood once in a while for like a dark fairy tale retelling. So I'm happy to have this on my shelf. This little one, oh my goodness, the energy, the absolute energy, it's never ending. So now that's gonna be everything for today's video. As always, thank you so much for spending some of your time with me while I sit down and talk about books. If you haven't yet, please give the video a like, subscribe for future content, turn on the bell notification, all the fun YouTube things that help your girl out, and I will catch you guys in the next video.